Hi, I'm Eric Vanman. I'm a social neuroscientist at the University of Queensland. And I recently posted this video about science fraud and it received a lot of views and also received over 1500 comments. <laughs> so many comments that there's no way I could respond to every single one of them. And the thing is, you know, I'm a teacher as well as a researcher. And if you were in one of my university courses, I would love to take the time to have a big discussion with my students about some of the points I raised in the video. And so as I was going through and trying to respond to individual comments, I thought it might be better to go ahead and make a video in which I talk about some of the main points that you have raised in your comments about that other video. Um, you know, perhaps to continue the conversation, to talk more about what this all means to have science fraud. In case you didn't see it, the original video focused on scientific fraud. And I began with three case examples, three very big cases. We have Diedrich Stoppel at Tilburg University, Wu Suk Huang in Korea, and finally Mark Tessier Levine, who recently had to resign as the president of Stanford University because of some problems with some of his papers. And I talked also in that video about the incidence of scientific fraud and how we could estimate how much it's happening. And I also talked about some possible reasons about why science fraud occurs. I didn't get to have much, I say, in that video about what we could do to fix it. What are the ways that we could correct it? And perhaps I left you in a slightly pessimistic state about what we could do in the future about scientific fraud. So let me go ahead and address some of those things here. Now, first of all, Several people respond to my video with, of course there's scientific fraud, duh. What, why are you making this video? And I have to say, first of all, there are a lot of people who weren't aware of science fraud, obviously, from watching, uh, reading the comments that I have from people who watched the video. Um, but the other thing just to remember is that this has been around for a long time. It's not some recent invention. Science fraud has probably been around as long as there's been science. That is, there's always somebody out there who, alone in their laboratory, can tip the scales or change some numbers or something to make their experiment work out so it's more likely to be published. Another famous example I could think of, by the way, was Cyril Burt in the mid 20th century, was a famous statistician and psychology researcher at the University College of London. He, his findings had a lot to do with uh, influencing policies that the British government passed in the mid 20th century. But it was later, after his death, it was discovered that much of his data seems to have been fraudulently concocted. That is, it looks like he's got fake numbers. There's all sorts of reasons to believe that much of what he was publishing about IQ, criminology, um, twin studies was faked. And this is not to take anything away from IQ research or to try to understand criminology. It's just saying that this particular individual seemed to have, you know, cherry picked some results, went ahead and fixed some other data that didn't fit. It's really, uh, it's really a big shame. It's, it causes us to you know, absolutely discredit what Cyril Burt's research did. And even before that, we have the Piltdown case of 1912 that a person mentioned in their comments to me. And this is uh, when someone actually faked some fossils of a supposed ancestor of, of modern humans in England. So all the way back to 1912, you got someone faking fossils to have fake data that would help with some scientific discovery. So fraud has been around and maybe it's just more common now because we have many more people doing science than we had a hundred years ago. That could be what it is. It could just be the same incidence of fraud all along and that we're just more aware of it. My second big point is that I want to say that I'm a strong advocate for science. My pointing out of scientific fraud wasn't me trying to say that you shouldn't trust science. I wasn't trying to say that we should just you know, give up on science altogether and move to something else because you can't trust science. No, in fact, I kept talking about the fact that the majority of science is probably done. I have to believe this because I don't have any data elsewhere to believe it, that most science is done with full research integrity. It's these small number of cases though, these famous cases and some other hidden cases that make us all a bit wary about some of the findings in our fields. You know, if there was a scandal in the movie industry involving a producer who preyed on young women when he was casting films, you wouldn't give up movies, would you? Or if you found out that there was some top singer who was also involved in some sort of scandal, would you give it rid of music in your life? It's the same thing with science. Just because we have some fraudsters in science doesn't mean that science itself is just corrupt and should be go ahead and demolished and, and get rid of. I, I saw some comments that are of that like, and I just can't believe that. I can't agree with it. Don't think we should get rid of science. 
And so I hope that you understand that I really do strongly believe in science. My hope is that talking about these issues in a video like that and other videos that I make, that you'll become more skeptical about findings in science. And not that you just reject them out and out, but more like, you know, if there's something that seems quite unbelievable to you, maybe you'll dig a little bit deeper and say, hmm, especially if there's only the one researcher that always seems to find this finding, it makes you be skeptical because what really happens is we usually have a community of scientists working on a problem. And if they all are committing fraud, then they would all fraudulently find the same fraudulent finding. I doubt that that's the case. It's what's probably more likely to happen is if there's a novel finding that other people are going to try to replicate it or at least incorporate it in their new studies. And generally, over time, these things get caught out. We find out that we can't replicate that finding. We can't, um, you know, show that this person had this effect. Now, we don't know if that sometimes when we can't replicate, if it's just because the first finding was just by chance or it was due to fraud. That's again, a problem of science. When we try to replicate research, we just are always saying, you know, is this really something that is a real effect out there? Or is it something that just maybe happened by chance? Um, this happens a lot to us in psychology. So I do strongly advocate that we replicate our research. And I'm always skeptical when someone's got a big finding, it's gonna be in science or PNAS or whatever journal it is, and there's nobody else who's ever found that before. There's not much reason to think that we'd find that. That is where my skepticism uh, sensors go off. And I think that more of us should be skeptical of that kind of research when it doesn't have a solid body of findings behind it. So collectively across many research teams, a consensus builds about what the facts are and what the theories are that are supported by the science. I'm unaware of any science fraud that's systematic where you've got people faking data across labs systematically working together to create a whole body of fraudulent research. If you actually know of some, it's not just your hunch, but you actually have some firm data that people were working together to create fraudulent findings, I'd be really interested in that, but I'm not aware of anything besides these individual labs or individual researchers doing things that are fraudulent. All right, so the third thing I wanna to respond to is the group of you who said, you know, who seem to think that Dr. Fauci and climate scientists and other people like that are committing scientific fraud and perhaps you came to my video because you were hoping that I would vindicate your thoughts about that. But I have to say, I don't agree with you at all. I don't think that there's any reason to believe that Fauci and other people working on vaccines or even climate scientists have committed any sort of systematic scientific fraud that would cause me to doubt all of the work that they've done. Now, of course, there always are going to be rogue scientists, a small percentage that admit to faking their data, um, but it's hard to imagine how you could have, for instance, in climate science, thousands of scientists across many different disciplines and institutions using all sorts of different ways of analyzing data, collecting data, different methodologies, come to similar conclusions that humans are accelerating the rate of change, the rate that we are heating up the earth uh, because of the things that we do with our fossil fuels. I just can't see how anybody could deny that at this point. The science is overwhelming and it can't be that there's just this gigantic mound of data that's all based on fraud. That just doesn't make any sense to me. And so again, I apologize if you are hoping that my video somehow was gonna substantiate your claims that this was all fraud. I just don't have any reason to think that. Again, if you have some really good source that shows me that the vast majority of this research has been fraudulently gained, like you know, there's some sort of uh, investigations the way they did of Diedrich Stoppel or something, yeah, I'd be, love to hear it. I'd love to hear more about that kind of research. My next point is to respond to those of you who think that psychology isn't a science. And I almost wasn't gonna talk about it here, but there's enough of you who made this comment. Now, some of you could be trolling me. That is, you could just be saying that psychology isn't a science or the social sciences are not sciences just to get a rise out of me. Um, but that also could be the case that some of you don't really know what modern psychology is like, for example. And I have to just tell you that my colleagues and I are scientists. We use the scientific method to look at all sorts of things about human behavior, cognition, uh, emotions. It's just we really, really depend on the scientific method. And it's because of that that I get really upset when I see other researchers out there who are saying that they're psychologists and they're not actually uh, using science to back them up. 
I've, for instance, made a video about psychology gurus who charge thousands of dollars to people uh, saying that they can help them based on very little science at all, if any. Um, whereas the rest of us are really trying to come up with sound solutions to modern life, to mental health problems, to learning and so on, using science as our basis. And therefore, I have to disagree with you here. Psychology is a science. Some of you also helpfully mentioned some other names of recent science fraudsters, and that would be Francesca Gino at the Harvard Business School and Dan Arely, uh, or Arely, who is a popular TED Talk presenter and a professor at Duke University. Amazingly, both of these esteemed superstars in behavioral science published papers on dishonesty and now have been found to have faked their data. They're going to have to retract those papers about of all things, dishonesty. As the scientists Simonson, Simmons, and Nelson wrote in their blog, quote, that's right, two different people independently faked data sets for two different studies in papers about dishonesty. They weren't even working together. They both independently were drawn to the topic of dishonesty and seemed to have both faked their data. Um, in the case of uh, Francesca Gino, it looks like there's 10 years of research that's going to, that's going to have to be retracted. Uh, it's just really quite amazing. And again, I don't know all of the details of this. It was something that I just recently learned about, um, so I didn't include it in my video. But I would, I would encourage you to go ahead and learn more about their cases as well. This is just, just amazing to me. So my fifth and final point is I want to end this video by telling you that I, I'm hopeful that science fraud is diminishing and that perhaps it soon will be replaced with new methods of conducting scientific research that will be more transparent and more rigorously conducted. And some people in the comments have mentioned some really excellent ideas about demanding replication or ho making uh, u journals be more uh, responsible for their findings. All of those would be things that I would endorse as under this umbrella of things that could actually improve our sciences. In the past 10 years, there are several scientists that have become leaders in improving science, and they're all my heroes. There's Brian Nosick at the University of Virginia, who founded the Center for Open Science there, and he and his colleagues have done amazing work. For instance, they're the ones that ran this very large replication project in psychology, where they looked at 100 studies to see if they could replicate them, and found that a very small number of studies could actually be replicated very important paper. Uh, Brian and his team are doing all sorts of other kinds of replications. They've also created a online place where we can pre-register our research before we collect the data. So therefore, all of our methods are transparent and open, and it's much easier to get a sense of where the science is going and how you can um, analyze the data and so on. So it's a really great initiative, the Center for Open Science. Um, we also have Samin Vizier, a uh, person who's at the University of Melbourne right now. She has done some really fantastic work in leading organizations into improving science, uh, improving psychology, for example. She's also um, a co-founder of a large meta-science group. I'll put links to all of these down below in the descriptions, but you should check out Samin's work. Um, there's Simonson, Simmons, and Nelson, and other people like them who have been sometimes branded methodological terrorists because what they do is they go and they look at published research and ask the researchers of that published research important questions like where's the data, um, how come I can't actually find the same results as you when I analyze your data, and so on. And because of these kinds of individuals, they've been going around and finding other fraudsters, finding and exposing people who have faked their data or have at least you know used questionable practices in the way that they conducted their research. Um, so there are people who are very much people I respect, but they don't get a lot of respect from the general public because they're, people aren't paid to do this kind of work. It isn't anything that you can really build your career on by exposing other people. And in fact, senior people in my field have very often been very defensive about these people when they come knocking on their doors because they don't want people sniffing around their data sets to see if there might be some problem with them. And by the way, if you know of other people who are doing this kind of work, please let me know and put it in the comments and I'll add them to the list. I really want to promote those people out there that are doing things to improve science, to make it more open and transparent. And I would welcome any other names and, and initiatives you know about. I do plan to address more of these kinds of solutions and other problems that we have in the sciences, particularly in psychology, including things like questionable research practices, 
plagiarism, ghost authorships, and the like. I also want to point to you to another YouTube channel that addresses a lot of these issues that I'm talking about in a much better way than I do. His name is Andy Stapleton, and I'll put a link to his channel below. I think he's no longer in academia, but he sure knows a lot about the way it works, and he has no problems exposing and talking about some of the hideous practices of academia, and I very much uh, respect what Andy Stapleton's doing. So for now, that's all I have. I look forward to talking to you more about psychology, neuroscience, academia, science in this channel. Um, so I hope that you'll stick around and watch some of my other videos sometime. So thanks for watching this one. Talk to you later. Bye.